Hi everybody, my name is Jabez, and um, you should know me by now, and my, or you can't get it, just call me Jabeziana, or whatever, don't matter, but um, let's get straight to the story. So I was with a dude, his name is Anthony, and accordingly he tried to ruin my life, but didn't happen that way. So, here you go. We met somewhere in his house where he used to stay with some people. And then after that, he had left to jail. Don't know why, then. And soon as he got out, he had been living with some dude somewhere. I used to go over there to see him. And after that, I was working at the time and this is when everybody had to file taxes at the moment or whatever and last year last year this happened all last year and soon as we like started to be committed to each other or whatever that's when everything just went okay for a little bit it just went okay for a little bit and I loved him, I did, but at a certain, at a certain time of the relationship, I stopped, like, I started to fall back on him because of bullshit. And we had, he had moved in with me, he had moved in with me when, my, when I was staying with my grandmother and all that, all my on my grandmother's birthday, also it was his birthday as well, we had a little thing going on for him, me and my mom planned it, and we had, they had well, he didn't have a good time, but my, I made sure my grandma did, because that's my grandmother, of course. So, right after the uh, party, we had left back home, so I guess he heard me speaking to my cousins and stuff about the situation between me and him. And I would just tell them, I don't know how this gonna work. I was basically just saying that. So it's like, it got to the point where the relationship started getting a little toxic. And toxic as in I'm meeting real badly and really badly in such situations. And <clears throat> soon as everything just started going and going and going and going, this nigga decided to put his hands on me this is the first time he put his hands on me. So when he put his hands on me, he grabbed me by my legs, had my hands, then slammed me against against the window or toward, on the wall. And then he picked up a, a lamp thing with a glass little lamp handle that he bought from Dollar General and threw it against the wall to make me have a scratch on my face or whatever. And then my eye was kind of fucked up. So right after that, this dude or whatever he we went back to my grandmother's after that and they were still partying so I went over there to just have a party with them whatever they were still partying and then we moved to Oklahoma but we didn't move automatically like move but we moved down there just to visit because I'd never experienced Oklahoma City at the moment I'd never been there so I went in a hotel with him he was trying to tell me to change my body and my facial and everything about me. He was trying to tell me to be a transgender. I declined it. So he got mad because I declined it. Because he was, I don't know why, but he got mad. So right after that situation, he just started just being weird. He just started changing. He just started changing. His attitude started changing. His vibe started changing. So I was, my vibe, my attitude started changing along with him. So I'm like, why is you having an attitude for me not changing my sex? I'm not changing to a female, not whatsoever. I can be gay while I am. I am a gay man and I'm proud and happy about it. Don't care what nobody got to say. Don't care who, family, friends, don't care. Don't care. So, 
he or whatever, we all, this and then, we actually did the move to Oklahoma, but that's what happened. This eventually was not supposed to move to Oklahoma, it's supposed to stay right where I am from. Which I am from, Wichita, Kansas. He was supposed to stay here. Not nowhere else. He decided when, I guess he's seen on my phone, because he had my password at the time. He seen on my phone that my stimulus or whatever check came in. He decided to fucking go down to fucking um, Oklahoma and rent him and put in his name a fucking apartment. Alright. Mind you. I didn't know shit because it didn't pop up my phone or whatever about the transaction, how much it was. But I wasn't tripping. I was not even tripping about it because I was ready to fucking leave anyway. That's how I was. So, went down there. I should have known not to do it, but at the time I was in so-called in love. So, we go down to Oklahoma. We eventually married each other in June, which June 20th. That's passed, been a year now, but we're not together anymore because I'm in the in the case again, divorce. And mind you, we went down there to Oklahoma. We was living in this apartment. And while I was not in the mood to have sex with him, he got mad because I didn't want to have sex with him. But I just like, fuck it. Just go ahead. Mind you, every nigga that I used to fuck with, I made sure I had a fucking condom. I made sure they had a fucking condom on every fucking time. Because you ask them if they are clean or whatever. Yes, it's not always a fucking valid answer. So, I still use a condom at that moment. I told him use a condom. So, we end up having a um, sexual intercourse or whatever. And I look back and his finger's on the condom and he popped it and did nothing in me. I got mad as fuck. I got mad as hell. I was like... I was just like so fucking mad like I didn't know what to do at that moment because I don't know what this nigga got. No, I don't know shit. So right after that, I had calmed down a little bit and said fuck it or whatever. Soon as that had went, I'm like, bro, what the fuck? So continually after he did anything, I told him don't do that shit again. So. He used condoms. I made sure I bought condoms every time that we ran out. So I gave him condoms every time we fucked. Every time. Every time. So, like, no. Right after the fact of everything, he so called me and him a doctor's appointment. And it was August 30th of last year, in 2021. All right. In Oklahoma, he used to fucking beat me up. Like, just beat me up. He beat me up out my sleep. Because I wouldn't let him, he's saying that I wouldn't let him touch me. First of all, I didn't have no problem with you touching me. I didn't care. I was just tired. I never told him we couldn't touch me. I never said nothing like that. He decided to wake up in his sleep. I'm half asleep. So I'm still like knocked the fuck out. He tried to drug me with fucking goddamn sleeping pills and shit or whatever. Shoved the motherfuckers in my fucking mouth and put water in my mouth. And I swore promise you, I swear to God, I was like out of there. I was fucking tired. This nigga made me take those and I was like half asleep. So I was like, why the fuck would you even give me that? Because you have an attitude. Don't make no sense. Then it started smacking me in my face, started punching me and shit, all that type of shit. Beat me up at my sleep, basically what he did. He beat me up at my sleep. And I let that go. I let that go. I let that slide too. I was like, what the fuck? So I wasn't about to, and at the time I was like, all right, I'm not even gonna put my hands on you. Like I'm not. And then soon as like his doctor's appointment and everything came together and all this shit, we go to the doctor's appointment. We go, before we even, no, wait, before we even go to the fucking goddamn doctor's appointment, this man beat me Pick me up, slam me on the fucking ground. My back was fucked up. I couldn't even fucking walk. None of that. Couldn't even barely walk. So we still went to that fucking doctor's appointment. 
So he used to hit me, he hit me with a motherfucking piece of a goddamn stand. I had my face swollen over here, a fucking scar on my eyebrow, and I could still feel that scar right here on my eyebrow. And then I had a scratch on my face, and then I had a swollen, my my uh, chin was kind of swollen at the bottom, and this whole side of my left cheek was swole. Because of the fan piece that he hit me with, but I took that shit. I didn't cry about it, but I took that shit. But while he did that before his doctor's appointment, before we went to the doctor's appointment, I went to the kitchen and grabbed a knife that I bought from Walmart. And I was about to slice his fucking neck off. I was, but I didn't. I did not do that just because of the fact that I'm not about to go to jail over a nigga that did something to me. Like that. Because it wasn't even fucking worth it. Because he gonna serve his time. He is. So, go to the doctor's appointment. Alright, I'm sitting in a chair. The nurse comes in. And this is where the part's gonna get real deep. It's gonna get deep as fuck. I'm sitting in the chair, the nurse comes in, she's like asking him who is me, and he said that that's my husband or whatever, blah, 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 all that type shit. She goes sit down in her chair, she asking him sexual questions about me and him. And he asked him, do we use protective sex? He said yes. He said yes, we was using protective sex. But still at the same time, you nutted in me. Why you broke that fucking condom on purpose? Bro, like, come on. So now he broke that fucking condom. Didn't know shit. Didn't know shit about his sexual activities. I didn't know nothing. I didn't know shit. I didn't know nothing at all. Soon as the lady opened her fucking mouth and looked at me and I'm looking at her, and I'm shaking, I'm about to start bawling, crying. I'm about to start bawling, crying. And soon after that fact that the nurse told me that this man had HIV. Okay? He had HIV. And and he He decided to fucking, he decided to fucking lie and tell me that he was clean. That's why I don't believe half of what the fuck a motherfucker would say to you. When you see a person like that, that's a person that fucking what? stupid. They're fucking stupid. Like, he's stupid as hell. Like, I wouldn't find out. Oh, no, so you did this to make me feel bad like a person and try to make people see me a different way. Make people see me a different way. Like, that's not fucking cool, yo. Not cool at all. So, this nurse, her name is Shannon. Well, she's a case manager, but her name is Shannon. She took me to the back. She told him not to come with me and stuff. So right after that, right after that, he left me up there at the hospital. Mind you, he told me to take him to go. He told me to take him to fucking Applebee's or whatever. I'm not, no, at that moment, no. No, 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 I'm not doing that. I'm not doing none of that. Why would I do that in that mix, you know? And right after you beat me, why would you think I'm going to take you somewhere? Like, come on. So when the nurse had told me to poke myself with a needle, but I didn't want to do it because I don't like needles, so she did it herself. So she put it in a little thing where the blood goes in. She put it in this water thing to make, to see how long it took 20 minutes for it to pop up it was one full red line but the other one was like fainted you could not see the shit you couldn't see it at all like i had to look that ass and she told me that when a fading line is like that it's cert was somewhat true or not true so we went to go take a whole test so i go downstairs and get a whole test then I asked the lady, can I get her phone? 
called my grandma, I was already crying and all that extra stuff. And so I was ready to come home. I called my stepdad. My stepdad, he gave me a greyhound to come back to Wichita, where I'm from. I had to leave everything down there, even my wallet, even everything. I had to leave every fucking thing. So as I come back to Wichita, this man decided to fucking add people to a fucking group chat. And before my test results even come out, my test results didn't even come out. It didn't. And he decided to add people in this fucking group chat and tell people that I was HIV positive. I was like, what in the fuck type of dude are you? And so since you did that, nigga, you already knew you had this shit. You already knew that I made that, what made that you as a person, bro. So it's like, I didn't know what to do at that moment. Couldn't do shit, but just live my life. Go, the nurse called me the next following week on a Monday and told me on the phone that yes, I was HIV positive, but my shit wasn't as bad as his. I didn't have a high chance of catching AIDS, but he did. He was like, I don't know, like this story is so fucking, this shit is so fucking stupid, like, Come on, like, why would you not tell somebody that before you even got in a relationship with them? I wasn't, all right, if he would have told me, I would have been okay. It's like, all right, if you're taking your meds and you can't transmit it to me, then all right, we're cool. But other than that, you're not even taking your meds to try to take care of yourself, bro, and you try to give that to other people to make the people feel bad about themselves and shit. Like, come on, like. I took a lot in that relationship to make my make sure myself was okay. So till then, right I get there, he tried to call fucking the doctor's office trying to get my test results, try to use my social, try to use anything that he can get. But the nurse told me that they still got recordings of him trying to do that. But he couldn't do it because he didn't know my password to even talk to her. So, yes, everybody, I am HIV positive, but I am negative on PrEP. There's a difference between HIV and AIDS. HIV, you can fucking take your medicine for, for, to prevent you from catching AIDS. If your viral load is too low, then you got to make sure you please take your fucking meds. And to the people, and I want to say this to the people that been through a situation like me or whatever, and that got sexually abused, financially abused, physically abused, follow your first gut. Please follow your first gut because these niggas or oh, whatever, these men, period. Excuse my language on that last part. But these men, they gonna try to tear you down because they just want to use you and what you got in life financially, sexually, or physically. Don't get, just follow your first gut. Don't always second, second chance yourself. Because I did that and I messed up on that. And I had to realize just to always follow my first gut. So, for the people that have been in relationships like that, sorry that happened to you guys. And hopefully, like this video, let y'all know that it's not worth it. You don't always have to be with someone to be loved. You can love yourself. You can do bad all by yourself. You don't need no man. You don't need nothing. You don't need no man to live no life. You don't need a man to live. 
you got yourself. And I just want everybody to know that. And that, and I'm truly sorry to the people that, I'm truly sorry to the people that, including my family or whatever, friends, I'm sorry that I let him try to tear y'all down too and try to tear me down too. I'm just sorry for everything that happened at that moment. And I'm especially sorry to my cousin and everything. And I just been wanting to get all this off my chest for so long. And I hope everybody learned. I hope everybody listens to my story and eventually will learn something from it. And yeah, there's nothing else I can say. But I'm living good. My money good. My living situation is good. So I love everybody unconditionally. And you guys have a blessed day.